Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and today we're going to discuss gallops in the art of tracking. Now, gallops are another gait that is used by an animal. All right? It's asymmetrical in pattern. It is the fastest of all the gaits and expends the most amount of energy. <clears throat> There's two types. There is a Z-shaped, which is also known as a transverse gallop. There's a C-shape, which is also known as a rotary gallop. <clears throat> How do we tell the difference between the two? Well, the feet, front and rear, that lead actually determine the pattern. And we'll get into that as I show that to you. <clears throat> in a gallop, uh, in a fast gallop, actually, you will have two airborne stages. Um, the takeoff off the forefeet is known as the gathering stage or the gathering suspension, excuse me. <clears throat> it's also followed by the extended suspension when the hind feet will take off. And again, when I show you the, the differences between the two, you'll start to understand that and you'll see what's going on with the feet. Uh, in a transverse gallop, most of the time you're only going to see a gathered suspension. So there'd be only one airborne flight or airborne section. Our straddle uh, reduces considerably and the tracks themselves seem like they're almost in line. <clears throat> they're that close together that they seem like they're in line in the direction of travel. All right, that's a, kind of a lot to take in. And of course, again, the rules of speed apply as well. The hind feet move forward of the front feet. So let's take a look at those patterns right now. And then uh, we'll have a little bit of footage on that too. I was lucky enough to obtain some of that. Okay, let's take a look at what you're gonna see with a transverse gallop. The left foot is starting this gallop here that you're looking at. So left foot comes down, right front foot comes down. The left hind comes down followed by the right hind. Remember the rear feet, whichever feet lead, that's going to determine the gallop that you have whether it be the transverse or whether it be the rotary. Now, very easily, if it was the other way around, the right foot comes down, right front, followed by the left front, again followed by the right hind, because that's the leading rear foot, then followed by the left hind, creating a Z. Again, you're going to see noticeably the straddle closes down. You'll have this as one group of tracks. And then you'll have what's known as the intergroup. Let's take a look at the whiteboard for that. All right, let's take a look at transverse gallop now on the whiteboard. And here we have two different trails. This one is leading with the left front foot. This one would be leading with the right front foot. And you will get that. They have the ability to do that. <clears throat> so we have the left front foot being number one comes down first, followed by the right front foot, which is number two, followed by number three being the left rear or left hind foot, and then finally ending with the right hind foot. There will be a period where you will see no tracks. Right? This is known as the intergroup, and that will be a measurement that you should know and you should take, because that will help you 
<clears throat> once you get a base, an average between your groups. Okay, this is one group, this is another group. So if you take that measurement and you have it, if you get to a point where you lose, say you're following these tracks, you're following this gallop, and now we don't see anything. You may not see tracks, but you may have to start looking for your depressions. If you have this measurement, you're going to know that somewhere in here, between this distance, let's say this distance is uh, three feet off that foot here, three feet away, in one of these directions, you should be able to locate another group of tracks. Now, that intergroup is also the airborne phase of the gallop. It's also known as GS or gathered suspension. And that will be in transverse. On this side, the right side, we have the right front foot leading off. So that would be number one, followed by the left front, which is number two. Again, followed by the right hind, and then ending with the left hind. And that gives us, either, on either side, that gives us our Z. Okay, or our transverse gallop. Right. In the rotary gallop, or the C-shaped gallop, we see why it would be known as the C-shaped gallop. Remember, the leading hind foot dictates the pattern that you're going to be seeing. So, with this one, the right front foot hits the ground first, followed by our left front foot, followed by our left hind foot, and then finally ending with the right hind foot. <clears throat> if we were to take this and move it here and here, we just go back into the transverse gallop. And animals can do that. They can change their gait at any time. It's just a matter of which foot is going to lead. That's the difference between a quadruped and a biped. We can't. They can. <clears throat> you have to start to think like that that they have the ability to do any gait that they want to. All right, It's their muscular movements. So, if we were to see a leading edge or a leading front foot of being the left front foot hits, followed by the right front foot, Then again, the right hind foot, ending with the left hind foot. Still a rotary gallop, but it was just let off with a front left foot, and then the leading hind foot was the right hind foot. Our rotary gallop, and again, two separate trails that you may encounter. This one we're starting off with the left front foot, which is number one, followed by our right front foot, continuing with number three, which is going to be our right hind foot, and then ending with the left hind foot. Now if you remember, I told you that in a fast gallop, especially in a rotary gallop, that there are two airborne phases. And I will explain this to you so that you actually know what's happening. From the time that, in this situation here, from the time that the right <coughs> front foot leaves the ground till the time that 
the right rear foot hits the ground, that is the actual GS or the gathered suspension. All four feet are off the ground and in the air. <clears throat> Third foot hits, fourth foot hits. Now this intergroup here becomes the ES or the extended suspension. And this again, they're all airborne, they're all up in the air, and they come down. <clears throat> For the purposes of what you're going to see and what you're going to measure, this is still the intergroup between the two groups of tracks and it is referenced as an airborne section. Again, now on the right hand side, the right front foot hits the ground first, followed by the left front foot, followed by the left hind foot, and then ending with the right hind foot. Here's our intergroup. Here's our next group here. Again, straddle, what do we know? Decreases. All right. And this stride, okay, you're going to measure this stride. You measure from here all the way to there. Same foot foot to foot. That's your stride. And we'll go over that in measurements of gates. It goes right into a rotary or a C-shaped gallop. And right here he starts to slow down. It's like a hop. And there's his hop or his bound. to here, slows down and he stops. So we have that. This gives a nice shot of the airborne phase. Here's your first group of tracks going into your airborne phase and then finally into your next group of tracks. And again as you can see how much the stride has increased. So the footage that you just saw was the um, rotary gallop. I'm sorry I don't have a transverse gallop on video or in a picture, <clears throat> um, but the what was on the board and what I showed you with the index cards is a accurate representation of what that gallop would look like if you encountered it. So that's the transverse gallop and the rotary gallop. Um, we're going to be going through lopes next, which are nothing more than a slower gallop. Uh, another kind of difficult gate to explain, but I'll do my best on it, and uh, that's it for now. So uh, this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, and thank you for your views and your comments, and until the next one, walk the woods.